All right, so we've got another boiler here. It's another Well McLean, high efficiency. I shouldn't say another, the other one was a Munchkin. Um, basically, the complaint was the office area was the only one that was getting too hot. Uh, this is a primary secondary loop, so same thing. Goes up to the header, comes right back down. You got one circulator there. You got your main circulator for the whole loop of the building. This is the commercial building. Uh, we've got a zone valve for the offices right here. And uh, so basically I had the uh, guy that, uh, show me around. So I went ahead and looked at some of these things, but I got to do them yet to make the repairs. The zone valve here, you can see that the uh, gearing in it, springs and stuff, it's not working right, it's stuck. So what I did is I got up there on the ladder and I was able to rotate the little valve back and forth and you can hear the water go through quickly and stop when I turn it the other direction. Um, it's very easy to turn, so I'm not worried about it being gummed up. But uh, that right there is our initial problem. But he also has other issues. He's got a pressure, gas pressure uh, safety here that is on the incoming side of the gas line. Basically that control there triggers if the incoming gas pressure gets too high. Uh, these boilers are negative pressure gas valves, meaning that all that valve does is open up, then the draft motor is responsible for pouring the gas into the boiler. So if that draft motor stops, it doesn't pull no gas in. That alleviates having to have a pressure switch that goes bad. Got our ignition system here that we'll go ahead and clean. It's got a condensate trap here, which is nothing more than a hose. We're gonna go ahead and take that out and clean it up. Technically, these uh, boiler plates should be cleaned out once a year if it's like they're smaller versions. I need to double check on that. But uh, it's got sensors on the supply and return that are monitored over here and there. So it maintains uh, making sure that the temperature coming in and going out is correct. And this is also has a reset, which is there's an outdoor sensor outside so when it's mild temperatures, this boiler will not go to full fire. It'll modulate higher and higher as it gets colder and colder. That way you're not wasting a lot of extra gas. The pop-off here is leaking. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and get that replaced. It, uh, so I got the numbers on that. So we just gotta get that replaced yet. And then when they replaced the boiler, they just kept the old um, expansion tanks, which we're bleeding those out now. Um, I only got water coming out of the smallest one. The bigger one, I took the valve completely out, but I'm gonna run a, uh, a rod up in there. Uh, that was uh, another concern of mine, just in case maybe that's why the pop-off was tripping, even though the pressure didn't look like it was all that high. Exhaust stacks look like they were ran correct. They look all right. They look like they're six inch PVC pipes is what we got going on there. Terminate out here. So um, another issue, like I said, that we're having with that gas pressure uh, triggering there. I gotta find out what my maximum incoming is, and make sure those are set right. But if you follow the gas line outside, we do have a regulator out here. So we're gonna double check, see if that can maybe be adjusted possibly. It's on the other side of the gas meter. And when you come out and around to over here, you can see that the gas meter coming in uh, it's medium pressure at least uh, could be possibly high but I'm, I don't think we have high out here it's hard to say I think it's medium pressure so basically it comes in and loops back over there uh, basically he said that everything works fine when it gets colder which means there's more load on the gas system and uh, when the all the people's furnaces come on the pressure drops and then it falls probably within limits so I don't know if there's gonna be a whole lot we can do with it. So that's that's what we got going on. Okay, it's still draining. I'm gonna see if I can fit this rod up there and get that cleaned out a little better. I don't think so. Let's see if this one here will. Some seems kind of odd that that's not got any anything at all draining out of it. Let me go ahead and just open that union there and see if that makes a difference. I just have this funny feeling that this one's got all the water, but the other one doesn't. Yeah. 
Yeah, I figured this probably wasn't draining. I mean, granted, they have a a little uh, tube in there that goes so far up. These were popular before my time. But basically, the tube usually goes somewhere in there and you usually drain it down to that. But since there's nothing coming out, I have no way of knowing. This sight glass here looks like there's water all up in there. It's, it's just really hard to tell uh, without taking it apart and cleaning. If I go to clean it, chances are it's probably gonna break. Luckily, they put a ball valve there to shut it down, which made it easy to isolate it. Now, when I did this, I, I had to turn the boiler off because if I valve this off, there's gonna be no room for expansion. And then you're gonna be blowing your pop off no matter what. So you definitely don't wanna do this with the uh, boiler running. There's a, a rod. I can't tell. I don't know if these are still available or not. And there's the little needle valve that goes in it that usually you open it up. All right, so we've got this valve off. You can see when we open it up that the water is coming up. Even after all this draining, it was all the way up to the top. So this tank was uh, completely waterlogged, which it's a good sized tank. This other one's not too small, but it's not, not even half the size. So this one was probably the only one working. Whether or not that was enough, I don't know. We're gonna get this plastic place because that's broke up there in the corner. For the small one, we have six and a half inches. Pretty much made a fairly smooth break. Got a little bit of a chip there, but that's gonna be down below the rubber. And we've got some uh, glass repair kit here. Just like that, that like that. And these do not have to be super tight. Chip side up to the top. Just in case. There we go. Alright, for giggles, we're gonna go ahead and bring a little water out so we can flush any crap out of the bottom. There we go. Just a little bit. All right, so we got that pipe doped with some gray stuff. Got our side glasses back in. Go ahead and open that up. The fill valve is right down there and it's filling. We'll see what kind of uh, water levels we get. You know, this should never have water in it. But why in the hell did they tighten it this tight? This is stupid stuff people do. It's copper and brass. It did not freaking seize up. Okay, it's 550,000 BTU boiler. I got a control here that's capable of doing 790,000. So we got our three quarter inch there. You gotta make sure these are sized properly, the pressure's correct, and the BTU capacity. My personal preference is to do a double. Try this Pro Dope out. I've never had a leak on one that you double up. Now that pop off relief, now the tube for the pop off. That was a little bit bigger than the incoming, so we're going to have to size it to the, to the valve here. This is supposed to be, I believe, three inches off the floor. Maybe it's two. You got to check your local rules. So, go. Right there should, should clear us.
Here's something that never happens. Valve must be tested periodically by a tripping safety lever to ensure it's function properly. Most of the time, if it hasn't been done on a regular basis, it never wants to reset. And then you come along and do it, and then you wish you wouldn't, because then you're gonna have to go track down a valve. Take this excess off. There we go. It's all about trying to make it look good. So we've got our pop off on there. Comes down to the floor. The reason for that is so you don't scald somebody. Task force wrenches. I've had these things since I started. I don't do crap loads, but here's a no-namer. Ridge is nice, but it's nearly four times the cost, and it's, you know, I haven't found it to be worth it for me. I'm not a full-time plumber, though, so it's not a big deal. Place your tools by the door so when you leave, you know you're going to pass over them. Just like my little light up there, I end up forgetting that. So we got that done. Now we can open this valve back up. This one actually has a spiral vent, so it should catch any air. Now they have a power stealing thermostat they put on there. It's one of those old, uh, looks like a T87, but it's not. You're gonna have to put a, a bleed resistor across here. There's what that other valve should have done. It should have retracted on its own. It's got a spring there. And that spring pulls it back. You can lock it into place and actually hold it there. And then once it powers again, it'll suck over a little bit further and it'll release and come back to the auto position. Um, so you can do that or say it's not working right, you can lock it in that position. Got an end switch on it that proves that it's open before it lets it go to the next stage. But TH and TR basically is our wires there and that's going to power it open. It's just a 24 volt. Oh my goodness. Made in the USA. That's crazy. Uh, that little valve just turns out right there. That's all it does. So there we go. So basically I've locked it in to the stem, then rotated it now. Oh yeah, that's real impressive. All right, not, not real impressed. So it just kicked on. Getting ready to modulate. Looks like she fired, that's a good thing. I gotta clean that sensor yet and clean that trap out. What's interesting is they actually have a thermostat in here that just is for the boiler. So as long as this thing's not at temperature, the boiler won't run. So this is kinda like a master stat just to keep the boiler hot. Then these thermostats over here, which are a little old, um, this one controls the ceiling heat. which is coil here, coil there, coil over there, and another coil up there. All right, so she's cranking out modulation-wise. She's hammer time. No leaking on my valve. That's always a good thing. Leaking down there. Still gotta check out that gas. That's a little out of whack. But it sounds like it's not something that just started. It's been doing it for a long time. Okay, if you look at the water level, that one there is just about a quarter of the way up and stopped with the three. The other one really hasn't done much. It probably, if you line them up, it's probably at the very bottom. Actually, I see water. A little bit of leakage here, I gotta tighten that up. All right, you can see a little bit of bubbles around that bottom packing nut. So we got that. Oh, we need to open that up. That helped. There we go. There's the water. And that don't help if that's leaking like that because that'll just bleed all my airway that we're using that as a buffer. So we'll make sure these are open, which it is. Add up a touch, a little touch. So we're a quarter of the way here, quarter of the way there. That gives you a buffer here, 
for your expansion of the water when it gets hot. In reality, since I got a valve here, which I normally would take that valve off, I would never leave that on there because if somebody comes in there and would shut that, it could cause it to blow the water all over the floor. And that could cause a lot of property damage depending on the type of building and stuff like that. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll take the handle off and wire tie it to the valve. That way somebody has to deliberately come in and actually screw with it and change it. Which in reality, since I'm the last one touching it, that's what I'm gonna do. You know, it don't matter what the other person did who installed it, when it comes down to it, you're the one that touched it last. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that off. Put our nut back on. She's getting hot for sure. All right, I got really lucky. Basically, here's the one I need, and there's what it, you normally use for residential and stuff. Most of your stuff, you can see there's a little bit of a size difference there. Running 5.3. That's all we're running. So if we shut the boiler down, which I think it just shut off. Looks like it shut off. It's jumped up to seven. Shut it off here just to make certain. All right, so we got that one drained completely out and another telemarketer calling me. Gotta love it. Sitting here going beep. Absolutely. It's bull crap to do that. Maybe. I like to call it finger control though. If you got finger control, you can have trigger control. You can have love control. You can have all kinds of control. Because you're in control. So anyhow, um, that thing shut down. We're gonna go ahead and power this down. We're gonna clean that sensor. They tend to get all carboned. Well, they get corroded. Best way to say it. underneath there which you can see that they never taken that apart and cleaned it anytime lately there we go don't look too bad we'll go ahead and clean it off with a, like I've said a million times my favorite is stainless steel brush um, if I can do that to my skin I'm not leaving grooves in my metal so that's why I like to use the stainless steel brush you can use a brass one too I expect but Stainless steel comes in handy if you need to clean up the aluminum for a solder job or something like that. That way you got one brush for everything. They're doing the spark and the flame sense off the same rod, which I've never been a real big fan of. That there's just as important as your ground reference. So make sure you clean that up too. And you know, like I've said a million times, guys, this is more for my young guys, my new guys, stuff like that. I'm just repeating things that most of you guys that have been in the field forever know. So it's not like I'm showboating or anything like that. It's just putting it out there for the ones that don't get to see it, don't have any mentors, don't have anybody out there to help them out. Not saying I'm something great here, but at least I'm doing it. It's got a teardrop, see the teardrop. We can also take a look inside there. <clears throat> I don't see anything in there. It looks pretty clean. The um, if it's, it's got the same maintenance maintenance uh, uh, recommendation that the uh, Ultra 155 has, um, then it will be uh, should be cleaned once a year or every two years. And you got ore gaskets, which looks like they've used red silicone on this one. Now for putting it back in, because we are dealing with the aluminum and I don't want to break it and then not have one and leave them without heat because that's one of the things you always got to watch out for. You don't want to come in for something that, you know, they at least had heat and then you leave with them with no heat because 
that can happen. That kind of, it's not good. So, yeah. Keep hearing water, but I'm thinking it's the drain. Okay, so we're getting snug there. It's got a flame sensor readout on this. It'll tell you exactly how strong the uh, sens sensor signal is. So, which is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, it's set right at 14 pounds or 14 inches. So I don't know why that would be triggering. That's a little odd. I uh, wonder if it's triggering on a low end because it has a low end here too. So these are set correctly. I can't uh, change them. So we're going to leave those alone. Um, 14 is what it says on the outside of the boiler as its maximum pressure. And I don't know if it has a minimum listed. Yeah, it doesn't have a minimum listed. A minimum, that's kind of like a cinnamon. And then they're not. Not go. Yeah, I'm not sure why that's tripping. I mean, we are technically in a safe spot, so I, other than maybe the, the gauge uh, might be inaccurate, that's about it. That's about the only thing it could be, unless it's actually peaking, which you need to have somebody here with a meter that can monitor it. And uh, do it that way. What you always do before you leave? Cycle it from the thermostat. That right there is probably one of the most important lessons you'll ever learn. About the time you leave a disconnect off on the roof and you gotta go back an hour to get back to where you were at, you won't do it again more than two or three times. Supply sensor attached, return sensor attached, outdoor sensor attached. And uh, basically what this does is they have a reset point as they call it. So when it gets down to zero out, which you can adjust that, it will literally go up to uh, maximum capacity based off of uh, what the outdoor temperature is. We got our clock set, that way we know what our uh, date and our clock and time is. It says target 140, we're at 140. Supply 131, 125 for return, so I'm sure it's got a variance in between there so much. This thing should be good to go. Mandatory water treatment. You must include the Sentinel X100 inhibitor to the system to prevent damage to the boiler's heat exchanger. So yeah, they have a test kit and stuff, definitely on aluminum heat exchangers, you're supposed to have some sort of uh, inhibitor in there to try to keep them from corroded and stuff like that. So make sure you follow the manufacturer's recommendations on that. Well guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell. Till next time guys, we'll catch you on the next one.